Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, boss13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our other podcast, in particular... You can check out our World War II series, The War, at thewar.greatdetectives.net. If you're into World War II, you will love this series, as we take a look at the history of World War II, starting at the pre-war era and continuing all the way through the war and into the post-war era. We cover a lot of ground, whether it's comedy or drama or adventure serials, or news and commentary. You get a picture of the way America went through the war and changed the course of the war. Check it out at thewar.greatdetectives.net. Also, check out our amazing world of radio series, amazing.greatdetectives.net, with all of the different series that we have done uh, for our Patreon summer series vote, including the summer of Angela Lansbury, the summer of Bogart, and great movies over radio, as well as our presentation of Les Miserables with Orson Welles. Then you can check out our comics podcast, the Classic Comics Podcast, ClassyComicsGuy.com, and also the video version of this podcast at VideoTheater.GreatDetectives.net, featuring classic television and occasionally some uh, public domain movies. Now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original title is January 26, 1949, and the title is The John Frawley Imposter Murder. I wonder what the natives are up to now, John. African natives, Sam, my friend, can be up to nothing or anything when that chanting starts going. <laughs> You're right. Hey, when are you going to be finished with that newspaper? Soon, then you can have it. Ever want to go back to the States? Not so you could notice. I've been here seven years, and I'm happy. Nothing back there I want. Till I want to go get it. You're worth a lot of dough, aren't you? You ought to know. You know everything else about me. <laughs> After all, when two gents find themselves the only white men in miles, a hundred miles from a city, they got to know all about each other in no time at all. Hey, how's for part of that paper? I'll give it all to you in a minute. Nothing interesting in it, anyhow. Yeah, you see, I haven't missed a thing being away from what's laughingly known as civilization all these years. Never want to see your brother? Look, the only thing I want to see is that paper. Now, be a good guy and let loose, will you? My turn to read it first, remember, Pat? Hey. Wait a minute. Yeah, what is it? Your name is John Frawley. John Robert Frawley, right? As if you didn't know. Why? Well, according to this newspaper... You're dead. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. If you don't mind my washing out something while we're talking... Do you, Charles? No, no, not a bit. After all, I, I didn't expect you. It's all right, Martha. You go right ahead. Uh, tell me something. Yeah? You remember Master John? <laughs> didn't I practically raise him after his mother died? Of course you did. Of course I was meant. He was your favorite, wasn't he? Mm, yes, indeed he was. You never did care much for Master Edward. Charles, it's been ten years since I left the cross. I know, Martha... I know you're still serving, Master Edward. That's right. But why did you come here to see me? Uh, did you read that uh, 
John Frawley was dead. I read it. And I don't believe it. Well, it's true. He's gone off somewhere. Yes, Africa was. He'll be back. Um... And the first thing he'll do when he does get back is to come to see me. Yes. Yes, I'm sure of that. He will. That's why I'm here, Martha, to make sure that you don't talk to him. In fact, I'm going to see to it that you never again talk to anyone. Homicide, Faraday. Police, somebody's been murdered. Who did you say, lady? I didn't say. I don't know. Oh, you don't know. It's been a murder. I, I, I heard the shot. Yeah, yeah, you heard the shot. Now, ma'am, take it easy. I'm trying to, uh, trying to understand you. Oh, dear. What's there to understand? I can't hear that. I tell you that somebody's been killed right next door. Yeah. Just sit there asking questions. Yeah, but ma'am, if, if... Oh, why aren't you out there catching the murderer? Where do you live, lady? I know. What's the address? Oh, 2177 DuPont Avenue. 2177 DuPont Avenue. Yes. We'll be there in ten minutes. Oh, we'll be here in five minutes. I said ten minutes. I may be next. Hold it, hold it. I'm coming. Well? You're Boston Blackie. I have been ever since I can remember. What about it? Uh, let me come in, Blackie, please. Come on. Thanks. Blackie, I'm John Crawley. So? I've been in Africa for a long time, Blackie. I flew back this morning. According to a newspaper I got in Africa, I'm supposed to be dead. Oh, you know how those papers exaggerate things. Now, listen to me. I'm in trouble. Go ahead. I'm John Crawley, but I can't prove who I am. Well, why should you have to? And why can't you? Let me tell you the whole story. It's always a nice idea. Well... My brother Ed and I inherited a couple of million dollars, Black. Well, Money that's in trust for us. I see. I got in a little jam here and went to Africa seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm back, we've new servants. And my brother insisted on the phone to me, I'm not John Crawley. I get it. You gave out your death story to the papers. As long as nobody can prove who you are, he gets the whole two million. That's right. I've been mm-hmm. running around all day since he said he didn't know me this morning. But we've just moved here before I left the States. I, I don't know a soul. And you expect me to prove you're John Crawley? Oh, I've heard about you. You can do it. Besides, Blackie, I, uh, I had a nurse, a woman named Martha Blake. If we can find her, she'll tell you who I am. And still, she'll tell everybody. That sounds reasonable. Sure. If she's in this city, we'll find her. Which I imagine will very considerably bother your brother. <laughs> Not far from Martha Blake's house, John. Well, should be on the next block. Uh, she hasn't moved since she registered at that employment office you found, Blackie. She has. We'll check and find a forwarding address. All right. Relax, Crawley. Relax. I will. We'll have you straightened out in no time. Number 388. Should be about halfway down the block on the right. Blackie, there's a crowd around that house. A very familiar figure in that crowd. My friend Inspector Faraday. I don't like this. All right, keep moving. Get this cut. Oh, it's you, Blackie. That's right. I suppose you heard over the radio there's been a murder. You want to help? No, I didn't, Faraday. I came over with this young fellow to see a woman named Martha Blake. Martha Blake? Come over there. You want to get in? All right. Drive around the block, Blackie. I want to talk to you. Yeah, before you start, Mr. John Foley. How do you do? Faraday, I just introduced you to somebody. Okay, so I'm not polite. Blackie, you going to listen to me? What can I do? I'm trapped. You said you came to that building just now to see Martha Blake. I was the one who wanted to see her. But she's dead. She was murdered a half hour ago. What? Don't be surprised, Crowley. Whenever Blackie goes to see anybody, that person's life is in danger. I must go see you more often. I don't care uh, who killed her, Faraday. How do I know? Blackie. Yeah. Maybe she was killed so she'd never be able to identify me. Say that again. Hey, don't bother, Crowley. Well, I... Look, Inspector. This young fellow is in a jam. He can't prove who he is. Yeah. It's possible this Martha Blake could have proven Go on, you're getting interesting. Who wouldn't want him to prove who he is? As if you're making any more sense than usual. I'll let you know. Leave this to me, Inspector. I promise I'll give you a lead in a couple of hours. Good little Inspector, and hop off here where I picked you up. Crawley and I have places to go. Well, be sure you let me know if you find out anything. I doubt. Goodbye, Inspector. Uh... You know, Crawley, I think you were right about the reason Martha Blake was killed. 
I didn't want to sick the inspector on your brother just yet, though. Hey, I can't get over this place. Martha killed while I was talking to you. Yes, I'm kid. Try thinking about somebody else who might have known you. Well, there is someone else, Blackie, but somebody I'd rather not see. As I understand it, there's a million dollars worth of reasons why you ought to see that person. Yes, but... What's the objection? It's the girl I was engaged to, Kay Morton. When I went to Africa, I ran out on the deal. Well, we're going to walk in on her now. <laughs> Just wait out here, Crawley. All right. Let me go into Kay Morton's apartment alone. I'll call for you when I want you. Anything you say, Blackie. I'll wait right here. Good. Yeah, here he goes. Who is it? Boston Blackie. Is that you, Miss Morton? Yes. Wait a second. Oh. Hello. All right, if I come in? Do you want to stay out in the hall? Not particularly. And what are you waiting for? Just that. I've uh, heard of you, Blackie. I'm wondering how it is I never heard of you. Well. And Miss Morton, at one time, oh. seven or eight years ago, you were engaged to a fellow named John Forley. Don't remind me. I've got to. Would you know him if you saw him again? Probably. Why? He's out in the hall. I want you to identify him for me. John Forley is dead, and that's okay with me. I read about it in the papers. Maybe he isn't. Then he should be. I imagine he has a different opinion about that. Oh, yeah? Is it all right if I ask him to come in? You've got some guy out there who claims to be falling? Hmm? Yes, that's right. Well, let me get a look at him. I'll tell you if he is or not. Thanks. Wait just a second. Oh, Frawley, will you come in, please? All right, Blackie, I'm coming. Thanks for... Kay! Kay, darling! You keep away from me, you! Say, I guess I'm not doing very well. It's stupid, but uh, then that wasn't my intention. Uh, Miss Morton... Uh, this is your former fiancé, John Frawley, isn't it? This guy, Blackie? This guy I never saw before in my whole life. Now, back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> A man claiming to be John Frawley comes back home only to find that no one will identify him. As a last resort, he comes to Boston Blackie for help. And when Blackie and Frawley try to find his former nurse, they find her murdered. Blackie then takes Frawley to his former fiancée, Kay Morton. But she claims that she's never seen him before in her life. As we return to our story, Blackie and Frawley near his brother's house. You think you can make my brother admit who I am, Blackie? I'm sure going to try. Good. I think I know why your ex-fiancé wouldn't do it. That isn't hard to figure. It doesn't help me any. Paulie, have you seen your brother since you're back? No, I talked to him on the phone when I got off the plane. He came right over here to the house. He's gone out. Who told you that? The butler, Charles. Mm-hmm. He denied knowing me and gave me the wonderful information about my brother refusing to admit I was alive. The butler could have been bored, of course. That's no problem. Is this the house? Yes. No lights on. Run over here to the side window. What's over here beside the side window? A safe, just inside the room. Do you think you could open a safe, Blackie? Maybe so. It's a little locked. Why? Maybe nobody being home is a break for me. There's a paper in that safe. A paper my brother doesn't know a thing about. How can that be? Well, he knows about the paper, but not that my fingerprints are on it. In an envelope with a lot of bonds that mature in a couple of years. So I don't believe it's been touched. In other words, if I get that paper for you, you won't need any other proof, huh? Yeah, come on. As long as everybody's out, we're safe. Faraday, homicide. Inspector, this is Edward Crawley. I'm afraid someone is going to kill me. Mm, anyone special you had in mind? A man who claims to be my brother, John Crawley. He claims to be, but he isn't, huh? My brother disappeared. This man is an imposter. And he killed Martha Blake so she could never say that he wasn't John Crawley. Well, my friend, I got news for you. This guy who claims he's your brother was with Boston Blackie when Martha Blake was shot. I know that for a fact. You do? Tell me something, though, Crawley. What? Where were you? <laughs> Do you want to 
want it just where you said it would be. I'm safe. Thanks for opening it for me, Blackie. Okay. Now, I think we'll get out of here. I'll take it to the lawyer first thing in the morning. It's me, fine. I'm going to pick up this flashlight and we'll get what? going. The lights. Hey, somebody turn on the lights. I did it. You. What? And both of you will please stand right where you are while I call the police. I should hate to shoot either of you, but I will if you don't do as I say. Blackie, it's my brother Edward. Really? Yes. Uh, you're Edward Crawley? That's right. Well, I can explain everything. I'm Boston Blackie. Of course, you know your brother John. That man is not my brother. Operator, I told you he'd deny it, Get me it, the police. We'll take care of everything when the police get here. That's the best break we could get. As a matter of fact, it is, isn't it? You. Hmm? The one who claims to be my brother. What's that paper you have in your hand? Uh, it's nothing. Just a paper. You rob my safe just to get a piece of paper? Why, I... Let me have it. No. Or if you like, I'll take it. Look, no. the paper, Blackie. No, 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 no. I've got his gun. Hold, you. Hold him just a second. Well, that's that. Yes. Yeah. I think while your brother is sleeping, we'd better get out of here, Polly. I guess so. This whole thing was wasted, Black. Right, so. Look at the paper. Torn to pieces. I'll never be able to prove my fingerprints were on it. No, I guess not. Great. All right, let's get out of here while I figure how to get you on the spot. Blackie, where is this guy who claims to be John Crawley? I'm sorry, I can't tell you, Friday. Thank you. I'll do as little for you sometime. That's right. Think I came over to your apartment to have you stall me? Friday, you don't really want to be stalled. That's the horses, not mules. Blackie, I don't want to fool with you. I'm after the murder of Martha Blake. I got a tip your friend John Crawley killed her so she couldn't identify him as a phony. I'll deliver Martha Blake's killer to you right after I have a chat with the Crawley butler. Who are you calling? The Crawley house, of course. I said I wanted to talk to the butler. What's he got to do with this? I... Quiet. I beg your pardon. Uh, no, not you. I... Uh, I want to talk to Charles, the butler. Uh, speaking. Uh, Charlie, my boy, this is Boston Blackie. Who is this? Did you know Martha Blake? Boston yes. Blackie is the name. I see. Yes, I knew Martha Blake. Yes, she is. Before Martha John went away. You've seen the man who claims to be John Crawley? Yes, yes, I have. A man... Charles. Charles! What happened? Apparently, the butt was in the chat. That's great. Even your conversation's getting deadly. You stay here, Blackie. I'll get over to the Crawley house right away. Okay, Inspector. Things are going just a little too far. I'm going over to see a certain young lady to make certain about a certain young man. Uh-oh. Then it is a body, huh? Blackie heard a shot on the telephone. But the butler, Charles, Inspector. Mm-hmm. The officer on the beat called homicide, and I came right over. Anybody in the house? Just the boys from headquarters. I don't mean that. I mean any of the family, the staff, or something. Well, as I understand it, there's no family at all. Just mm-hmm. a young fellow who owns this place. His name is Edward Crawley. No trace of who did it, of course. That's what the boys are looking for. Did they find a gun? No. Did they find any evidence that someone broke in here? Huh? Did anyone see the killer leave? No. No, no, no. I just found out what I need in my department. Just one yes, man. You uh, want to know the truth, don't you, Blackie? I didn't come over here to play games. Oh, they'd be much more interesting, believe me. Uh, cut it out. Oh, no, Blackie. That fellow I brought here before, is he John Crawley or isn't he? He is. You denied it before. Why? Why should I help him after what he did to me? Okay. Well, I want to know. I'm going to wind up this case in a hurry now. Oh, wait a minute, Blackie. Yeah. Who is it? Eddie Crawley. Oh. Wait a minute. Just a minute. All right. Just a moment. I'm coming. Hey, I've got... That's all right. I'm Boston Blackie. I didn't recognize you without the gun in your hand. Miss Morton, he was just telling me all about it. You didn't tell him? No. Leaving, Eddie? Eddie, uh, I have something to discuss with you. Come here. No, you don't, Blackie. Oh, that gun again. And this time I'll use it if you try to stop me. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not going to wait around to find out. Well. He took a well right out of my mouth. He certainly left in a hurry, but he did us one favor. 
He left us alone. One of us is going to stay that way, my dear. Oh, no, Black. I'm going to fix up a little plan with your ex fiance A plan? Maybe this case won't ever make the social register, but it certainly belongs in who's who. Blackie, I admit I'm stupid for coming here to your place just to listen to you. Now, Faraday, you're showing signs of intelligence. You realize that when I got to the trolley house, the butler Charles had been shot? Edward carries again, Inspector. So do you. What does that mean? It means you're wrong, as usual. What? I gave mine to John to have when he met his brother. I want John to be unprepared. Where are they going to be? A little hotel on the west side. Mm -hmm. I traced Edward Crawley there after he put a gun on me in Kay Morton's apartment, and I told John where to find his brother. How nice. There ought to be fireworks when the two of them meet. As one clockmaker said to another, want to watch? Surprised to see me here, aren't you, Eddie? you in my home ransacking my safe. So why should I be surprised to find you in my hotel room? That's logical. You won't admit I'm your brother? Never. You're not my brother. You read somewhere that after seven years he was declared legally dead, so you decided to impersonate him. So there was a struggle. You pulled a gun and I had to shoot you in self-defense. That I get the whole two million for myself. What are you talking about? You see this gun? It's Boston Blackie. I'm going to kill you with it. No, no, you're not. I've got a gun and... Sorry, me first. Okay, both of you, hold everything. I, I shot him. I shot him, but he didn't fall. You don't think I'd give you a gun loaded with anything but blanks, do you, John? Or whatever your name is. But Blackie... This gun I'm holding is really loaded, believe me. Now, let's have this story, Blackie, the real one. But, Frank, what do you I see? I think I can give it to you, all right? This lad here who claims to be John Crawley... Isn't. I kept saying that, but I didn't believe it for a while. Anyhow, the chances are he knew your brother and found out enough about him to try this impersonation. A million dollars was his if he got away with it, remember? Blackie, I am John Paul. Oh, no. And uh, I'll tell you why you couldn't be in a minute. What? Anyhow, you probably killed the real John Crawley and came to America knowing you had to kill three more people. John's nurse, Charles the butler, and John's brother. That's a lie. Go on, Blackie. They were the only ones who could recognize the real John. But this lad here met Charles and made a deal with him so that Charles killed the nurse. Later, he had to kill Charles, of course, and he did. Blackie, you're not making sense. Don't bet. What? Okay, we go now to Kay Morton. Why? She denied you were her ex fiance because you weren't. Simple as that. Later, when I came to her, she said you were because you'd threatened her, too. You're coming to me with your big test. If I believed you were John Crawley, the rest would be easy. You helped him rob my safe, Blackie? Sure. And that's where he gave himself away. There were fingerprints on that paper I got from him. The fingerprints of the real John Crawley. Uh-huh. This lad had to destroy them, and when you grabbed the paper from him, I noticed he helped tear it into pieces while you were grabbing it. Now, that's what started me on the right track. You got derailed somewhere along the line, Blackie. No, I didn't, my friend. When you tried to kill Eddie here with my gun, that was the real payoff. I was hoping you'd try just that. That way, you'd eliminate the last person who knew you were phony. Oh, by the way, where's your own gun? Right here, where I can use it to blast my way out. Oh. Did you kill him, Inspector? No, he lived to die in the chair. Good. Now, Blackie, maybe you won't believe everybody who comes to you with a hard luck story from now on. Well, he did have me fooled for a while, Faraday. I'm glad I had you listening outside the hotel door. Why? In case you ever lose your job, you can always get one as a house detective now. You know, I'll be glad to tell you anything, Blackie. Miss Morton. Um, Kay. Okay, it's Kay. Uh Uh-huh. But you won't have to tell me anything. No. Just be prepared to testify that the man who was masquerading as John Crawley did threaten you. All right. Now, that all you want, Blackie? Yeah, I guess so. We need to cinch the case. Uh, did you ever find out what happened to the real John Crawley, Blackie? I traced this pony back to Africa, where I found out he and your ex fiance were together a lot. Oh, they were? He hasn't confessed yet that he killed Crawley, but I'm sure he will. Well, all I can say is, anything I can do to help... Thanks. I appreciate your cooperation, Kay. And, um, uh, you might come to see me again, you know. You might remember that what brought me to you the first time also put you in quite a spot. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want me to come back under the same circumstances. Oh, would they have to be the same? Mm, I imagine so. In that case, Blackie, goodbye. It was so nice knowing you. 
Well, well, what about it, Bill? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Got an idea for the lyric yet? Uh, play the melody once more, Dick. I think I've got something. That's about time. Okay, okay, hold. hold. All right. That's it. I won't fall again. I won't fall again. Till I lose her love for you. That's a bad song. It never was bad. That fool of yours sounds like 800 others. How do you expect me to get any kind of original idea for a lyric? Give me something to work with. All right, all right, all right. Now look, Bill, we've been fighting like this for months. We've got to do something, and we haven't written a hit tune in a year. You want to break up the team? No, I don't want to. They both seem to be written out. What do you mean? How those last songs we did. <laughs> Joe Hendricks wasn't our friend as well as a music publisher. He'd have thrown him up in the alley. And you put together an awful lot of bad lyrics for that group. Oh. That's my fault. The lyrics were bad. Yes, they were. Just because I couldn't save those tired tools of yours, it's my fault. Tired tools? I ought to punch you right in the nose. Maybe hey, a fine answer to our problem. But at least give me some satisfaction. Yeah. Well, I'm warning you. I don't like violence, but I'm getting to a point where I'm going to forget how much I hate violence and remember only how much I dislike you. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, a little bit of a convoluted story, but still interesting, even though it didn't have Mary in it, but it did have a story on Boston Blackie where Mando Kramer doesn't end up playing the killer. So there's that. Well, listener comments and feedback now, and we get this from Twitter, and uh, it's a question from Mr. Gibson who writes regarding Charlie Kingston and the Vanishing Fourth Floor. Hi, Adam. Fantastic episode. Who provided the voice of Charlie Kingston? It sounds a lot like Burgess Meredith, and I'm wondering if it was him. Well, thanks so much for the question, uh, Mr. Gibson. And when it comes to these sort of questions, um, if the voice isn't clear to me, I'll pretty much just talk about the probability uh, and I'm not entirely sure it was Burgess Meredith. And with these New York shows, uh, oftentimes uh, most of the actors are uh, unknown uh, because they didn't have, you know, these uh, greater Hollywood careers. In the case of Burgess Meredith, I'll say that it could have been him. Uh, and there may be a better chance uh, than you might think. Because uh, Meredith uh, was part of the uh, Hollywood blacklist, and that uh, limited his work in films. He did uh, work on uh, radio and in theaters. He did not have anything that I could find that he was doing on Broadway at this time, but could have had some work off Broadway. I can definitely hear the uh, similarity uh, in uh, some uh, the voice on Boston Blackie, so 
I'll say it's possible and just leave it at that. So thanks so much for the question. I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Lise. Lise has been one of our Patreon supporters since uh, July of 2017, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Lise. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next Thursday, we're back with another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.